So I'm very excited to have Tiffany today because she's not only a good friend, but she is a very important personality within the food scene in Dubai. Um, she's the editor of Spinney's Magazine. She's my travel buddy. And I'm very excited for her to be in my kitchen to teach me some of her favorite recipes. Um, so what are we making today? So we are making a super easy tomato tart, okay. which I think I've been cooking since I was 12. Um, my mother used to put me to work with this and be like, I need this, you know, and I'd whip it up. So I have to tell you, I'm very excited that you're going to be showing this because yeah. I had a DM one day where someone was asking me, how do you make a tomato tart yeah. without it being soggy? Because that's a problem for a lot of people. So yeah. hopefully you can share us some yes, tips and so tricks. yeah, I mean, sometimes it is soggy, but if you don't like layer too much onto it, and so you don't, you know, you don't want that pastry to be like holding like tons of whatever the topping is, yes, then you're going to prevent that sogginess. Um, and start with crisp, cold pastry as well. And when would you serve this? So lunchtime, like it's really lovely with a salad, um, a snack at a, you know, like a aperitivo yeah. hour, dinner if you need something easy. It's kind of like an upscale pizza, I guess, you know. <laughs> well, I'm very excited to learn how to make this. All right, shall we get started? Yes. Okay. 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 So before we start, I should preheat the oven. Yes. At what temperature? Uh, 180 degrees. Okay. All right. So we're going to brush it with melted butter. Um, I must admit that I actually don't look this professional at home when I'm doing it and I just grab butter with the back of the, the paper and rub it all over, but that's not the way to do it, so we can do it properly. Um, you were mentioning earlier that when you went to your cookery um, experience this summer, yeah, I can never remember the name. Ballymaloo Cookery Bally School Maloo. in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, they told you you must always use melted butter. Always, and always with the brush and no difference. So I think that's now ingrained in me. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm just making, it looks like a lot of butter, but it's really not. Um, I'm just making sure that the sides are really well coated. And yeah, I think that's good to go. There we go. So now we need our pastry. Yeah. Okay, I have um, it in the fridge for you, so I'm going to grab it. Yeah, it always needs to be cold. So we probably made this a little bit too cold because we popped it back in the freezer, but that's okay. Rather too cold than too hot. And you could actually roll this around a rolling pin, which would make life a lot easier to put in. But you know, we casual cooking today. So can I ask you to bring that closer yes. to me? Okay, then you sort of just judge the middle. Um, yeah. There we go. And then I'm gonna press it down. So you like to keep it quite rustic, don't I you? I really do. Yeah. Like, it's kind of based on like a rustic French tart, you know? Yeah. So I'm just gonna crimp the sides together. Okay. So yeah, so I kind of just do that. I keep it really rustic. Okay. Okay, they should sort of be the same height, but it's gonna puff. Right, so that's it. Um, now we just need to prick the base a little bit okay, with a fork. And then we're going to place the pesto with the back of a spoon. Uh, just a gentle layer. So I'm not going to do tons of pricks because we've obviously got pesto which has got some oil and I don't want that seeping in and making it soggy. Um, and then now I'm going to use just a layer of pesto. So you could use red pesto, you could use tapenade. That's my favorite actually, but it's really quite hard to find in Dubai. I'm going to keep it quite light. Okay, so I think that's looking good. Let's just give this side some love. <laughs> Okay, so now basically we're just going to do a mix of cheese. Um, so we've got Gruyere, which I love. I went to school in Switzerland mm -hmm. for a while and became obsessed with Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to the region of Gruyere, which was really interesting. So yeah, I always use Gruyere. Uh, like it's yeah, it's good to mix. <laughs> I am quite liberal with the cheese. I really like cheese. So I'm going to load it. Let's do a little bit more. So yeah, that's good. Perfect. That's enough cheese. Now we need to finely slice tomatoes. I think that's the hardest part of this whole recipe. So you really actually, need a good knife. Super sharp. You could, I'll just move if you, Are you feel like spending a lot of time in the kitchen, you could do this with cherry tomatoes and slice each one in half and then layer it. But it's going to take double the time compared to like whole tomatoes. So I think we'll do whole tomatoes. Yes, I think. So. <laughs> yeah. And you can do all one color. You can do a mix. I really like to do a mix of colors. And I like heritage tomatoes or heirloom tomatoes. 
but anything if you've got old tomatoes that you need to use up just use them so is the tip of thinly slicing them the key to maybe helping them from not getting soggy yeah absolutely okay. Um, and, and would you would you uh, toss the pulp out or would you use the whole I keep the whole thing yeah, yeah. Um, and actually you know if you're talking about using up you know how tomatoes can go quite soggy yeah. the older they get um, so I don't necessarily if I've got tomatoes then I'll use them up but otherwise I search for firm tomatoes like this yes. it's like a really nice one yes um, yeah so this one is a little bit you see it's not so firm but it's gonna be fine because we're just gonna have one layer of it probably um, so i'm gonna start with red and feel free to jump in if you okay. want to layer tomatoes yeah i like them to overlap ever so slightly okay i was gonna ask yeah <laughs> like you've got the perfect quantity of the red ones yeah it's We've got that some excess so we will pretty. just eat off camera. Um, so we could put another one in the middle, but I think that that's great. No, this is gorgeous. Um, so now all we're going to do is drizzle some olive oil. Okay. Um, so with olive oil, I always use extra virgin um, organic olive oil as much as I can. Um, this one for good luck. <laughs> um, and then some salt and pepper. Later, we're going to top it with olives and basil, but I don't like the olives to cook in the oven. No because it is going to cook for like 15 to 20 minutes. So it really depends on your people, like different ovens. Yeah. Um, if you've got a really good oven, it will be 20 minutes, um, but it could, if, you, if it heats up too fast, watch it after 15. Okay. Yeah. You can always add more of this when it comes out. Good to and go. This goes in? Yeah. All right. Ooh, can I ask you to? Yes, yeah, sure. Sorry. So it's. I just love the way it puffs up like this. It will drop, so don't worry if you guys are making it home and it does this. Um, hopefully, it'll go down. It usually it does. Smells really, really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. And I, this is like the perfect coloring that I like on the outside. Pop it on there. Oh. And voila. There we go. That's <laughs> yeah. really smart. Yeah. And then it's just sliding it onto the plate. Okay. So. I'll put it there for you. Yeah. Yeah. You want to lift it up a little bit? Yeah. Oh. Voila. This is Excellent. really smart. Yeah. Um, so now um, just scatter some olives on the top okay. and some basil and it's good to go. You could wait for it to cool down even more, but you know, we we're like both waiting. impatient chefs as we've realized. <laughs> and you can cut these olives in bits. Um, you can try and do some sort of a pattern. Yeah, and again, use up whatever olives you have. And then basil, again, you can rip, you know, it's always good to tear basil and then, cause that's where the, you get the flavor coming out. Um, or you can use whole leaves. I think I'm gonna tear it. Yeah. Um, cause I just love that fragrance. I think basil's my favorite herb. Um, yeah, it is a pretty good herb. Yeah. There we go. So it's a little, it's really rustic. It's within me. <laughs> there we go. Done. Easiest tart in the world. And Fantastic. And we get to taste it. Yes, don't we? absolutely. All right. And I can't wait. Yes. Again. So again, because we're impatient, we're cutting this really quickly. You need um, to let it usually cool yeah, down. Yeah. And it's really great as a cold tart as yes. well. So, you know, like the next day as well, leftovers is really good. So let's just go for it. You're going to want more. I'm going to want more. <laughs> there we go. we go. Go for it. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Isn't that good? Mm. I've managed to like mangle mine already. Mm, that's <laughs> yeah. so good. Mm. Um, it's comforting. Like quality ingredients, but so much flavor. Mm. Everything together. So simple, so delicious, and definitely worth trying making it at home. Good. Thank you, my friend. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right. Don't forget, subscribe. Lots of tastemaker videos going to be coming your way. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Bye. Bye.